Well, good morning, church family. Uh, great to see you. Great to be back for our Tuesday, Thursday devotions. Uh, missed you guys, and uh, again, I appreciate Connor for uh, standing in for me during most of that uh, time, and Clifton also for that one devotion that he shared with you. It's also good to have my smile back and uh, hopefully uh, be able to get something more permanent done pretty soon. You know, on Sunday, we talked about uh, Paul in Philippians chapter 1, and specifically in verse 12, you know, Paul had been, has been in a Roman prison. He's been chained to Roman guards uh, throughout the time that he's there. And uh, Paul, in, in that time, uh, has to, as we said Sunday, reinterpret the situation that he's in. You know, many of us, as we've walked through this COVID-19 pandemic, we've had to, uh, we've had to really deal with the, the sense of loss and how the, the sense of l the loss of normality. Some people have had to deal with the loss of uh, economic uh, ability for uh, wage loss. And some people have had to actually deal with the loss of loved ones. And we've had to deal with the loss of our church being able to worship together. And, and so everything has seemed so out of the ordinary, so unnatural. I think Paul was in the same circumstance. Paul went to Rome. His prayer was, his desire was, if you go back and look at his life in the book of Acts, Paul's desire was to go to Rome to the greatest, uh, the greatest nation and the greatest city in the world and to proclaim the gospel and establish a church and, and to do the things that would be considered normal uh, for the apostle during that time. But as we know, Paul ends up being uh, arrested. He's put on a, on a ship to uh, Rome, and there he's placed in prison. So things aren't exactly the way Paul thought they would be. And thus, Paul says in Romans, I mean, in Philippians chapter 12, uh, I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, Paul writes this, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me, we talked about that Sunday, but yet Paul doesn't really talk about what has happened to him. He simply goes on to say, has actually served to advance the gospel. Uh, so Sunday morning we talked about uh, that Paul wasn't delivered from his circumstance, at least not at this point, but that he reinterpreted the circumstance to be able to see through the eyes of God and what God was doing that, that still, though he wasn't able to do things as he normally would, that, that nonetheless, the gospel is being advanced. And you remember, that's what Paul said is ultimately important. And I suggest that uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, that it's okay for us to pray for deliverance. In fact, I think it's what we should do. We should be asking God to deliver us uh, from this pandemic and to bring us through it and to uh, be able to get back to the place where we can meet together and worship together again and where we can be out among our friends. I mean, it's okay to pray for those things, to be delivered from the, the effects of this devastating disease and, and the impact that it's having on our world. But uh, that we must also, just as Paul did, we must also try to interpret our circumstances differently. Uh, we need to try to see what God may be trying to do during this time. In the book of Acts, I mean, the book of, of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 16, uh, we read these words. He said, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Now, uh, we will either be uh, broken by our circumstances or we will, or we will let the crushing uh, and the producing of the new wine prepare us to receive what God is doing, to prepare us for the new wine that he is producing. You know, one of the praise songs that we sing at McQueenie is the song New Wine. And, and let me just read a few of these words to you. It says, in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me your vessel. 
make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In this time of crushing and pressing, uh, we may pray only for our deliverance or we may pray that through our surrender and in our circumstances, uh, we may be new wineskins ready to receive the new work that God is doing. Uh, you know, just since last Sunday's message, Connor called me and said that he'd been contacted by one of our members, Liz Oakley. And uh, we talked about this in the business meeting. If you were able to watch the business meeting online or perhaps you were there at the business meeting Sunday evening, uh, we, we discussed uh, this. But uh, Liz had the idea to reach out and minister to those who are on the front lines in the Guadalupe Regional Medical Center to be able to let them know those people that work in the, the emergency room and those that are working in the ICU that are caring for people and ministering to those, uh, caring for those that are suffering with COVID-19 as well as others that are putting their lives uh, on the line every day. And her idea wasn't simply we let them know how much we appreciate them. And, and so she asked some of the people that work there, what, what, uh, what would they like to have if we were to give them something? And, and they interestingly said that they would, they would love to have a, a banana and a, and a, uh, oh God, my mind just went blank. Uh, <laughs> well, it'll come to me in a minute. Anyway, they asked that we bring a refreshment, some refreshment to them. And so Liz Oakley got with Connor. They, they began planning this. The church met Sunday night to, to say that whatever we need to do out of our benevolence fund, since we have extra funds there now, that we would do whatever we need to do to help fund this and to uh, get these items to them. And, to, and also, Connor's going to get our students together and safely distance them with masks on and all of those things. But get together, they're going to write some thank you notes to these uh, these people that work in the medical center to say thank you for their service and uh, and the, um, the, the the bottles of refreshments that we're going to give them are going to have our have our church name and a scripture verse uh, on that uh, on that bottle to say thank you and to let them know that McQueenie Baptist Church really appreciates them so this is one thing that's happening it's already beginning to develop and I, I think this is what I was talking about Sunday and saying that we can either sit and just long for to, for things to be the way they were, or we can just begin looking uh, for what God wants to do new and afresh in us. Also, just this morning, I got a call from Christy Steuben, uh, who is a director over our elementary children, and, sh and she said they want to do something as well. And so she and got together with Lauren, and they're going to uh, choose a nursing home in our area and do do similar things just to say thank you to those that are serving in the nursing home. So we're, we're going to begin looking at how we might be able to serve and how we can be the church during this time. I'm excited about that. What I want to do is ask you to pray about that as well. Uh, you know, all the ideas aren't going to come from the pastor. All the ideas aren't going to come from the staff. The, the ideas and the ministry is going to come from the body of Christ. Uh, there are people that are, that are locked at home they can't get away they're they're homebound people that can't can't get out of the house maybe it's just going by and taking them a little about basket of refreshments and sitting out on the in the front yard in a lawn chair and just talking to them and letting them know that we love them and we care about them maybe it's writing some cards and letters to people that are homebound there's so many things that we can be doing during this time let's let god produce new wine and let you, us you me be receptive and ready to receive what it is that god wants to do so i'm going to ask you to pray about that okay over the days ahead and as we conclude our our time of devotion today i want to uh, lift up a prayer and then after the prayer we're going to uh, listen to evie and joe as they do the song new wine and i just want you to sit and let that song minister into your heart and life this morning and let it speak to you in a very special way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, how we pray that as we long for the time when we could be back together and things could be back to, quote, normal, that, Lord, instead of just looking and having our eyes focused on that, that we could begin to look and listen, have our eyes focused on what it is that you want to do in us and through us during this time of pandemic. Lord, I know that you're producing new wine. Lord, let us be a receptacle, a receptacle that is ready and, and, and pliable and ready to receive what it is that you want to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you. I hope you have a great day. Let's listen to this worship song together. Thank you.